A new trial has been set for a man who was nearly acquitted of murdering a successful grape grower. But the decision to retry the case isn't final just yet. 17's Olivia Lavoie joins us with more now. Olivia. Well, Kristen, it is rare for a trial to end in a mistrial, with 11 jurors voting to acquit and just one holding out. But what's really noteworthy in this case is what happened in the courtroom that likely had a huge impact on jurors. It was one of those rare courtroom moments you usually see only on TV. It's not something you see very often. It happened when the eyewitness to the deadly shooting of 84-year-old Yakov Dulcich took the witness stand for the prosecution in the case against 25-year-old Mariano Perez. Mr. Perez stood up. The eyewitness specifically said, that is not the shooter. That is not the perpetrator. A huge moment for the defense and a big blow to the prosecution. I I believe that the district attorney was banking on the eyewitness coming into the courtroom and saying, oh yeah, that's him, because oftentimes that can happen where someone is unsure and then they just assume, well, if this person is on trial, then they must have found some other evidence. So I might as well go ahead and say it was him because, I mean, why else would he be here? Luckily, in this case, the eyewitness, he remained truthful and he kept saying from day one that I do not know that it is him. And in fact, he didn't, the perpetrator didn't have tattoos and Mr. Perez has tattoos. April 11th, around 8 a.m., the eyewitness watched Dulcich's Range Rover and a gray sedan seemingly try to run each other off Browning Road and Garces Highway before Dulcich was shot repeatedly, causing him to collide into the eyewitness's PT Cruiser. The witness told officers the killer was the passenger in the suspect vehicle. The witness said the killer continued to shoot Dulcich after he crashed. The witness also said that the shooter tried to shoot him after he murdered Dulcich. The DNA excluded him that was found at the scene. The fingerprints didn't match Mr. Perez. But there was something else that led investigators to look at Perez. The only testimony that we had was that the suspect's vehicle was a gray generic four-door sedan. According to reports, the eyewitness called it a gray Hyundai or Toyota. This information is important because of what happened next. On the same day of the incident, there was a car that was burning in Tulare County, and it was a gray four-door sedan. This was before Perez was arrested. The burning car was a silver 2009 Kia Rio sedan registered to Perez's sister. Yes, there is some evidence that Mr. Perez occasionally does drive the car. Earlier that day, Perez's mother had reported the car stolen. Blythe says they still don't know how it ended up on fire across the county line, but she adds... There's no evidence that that car was, in fact, the suspect vehicle, that Mr. Perez was, in fact, driving the car on that day. They searched Mr. Perez's house. They found nothing. And while the prosecution isn't required to prove a motive, it's hard not to question in a case with an unlikely victim killed in a seemingly very targeted attack in broad daylight. My client does not know the victim, has never met him, has never had any interactions with him. The district attorney's office has come up with no motive because my client didn't do this. The, the Dulcich family does need justice, but justice is not convicting someone that didn't do the crime. Now, Prosecutor Ken Russell said his office hasn't made a final decision on whether they'll take Perez to trial again and could not comment further. Recently, investigators discovered that an employee of one of the vineyards owned by Dulcich was fired the day before the homicide. Attorney Lexi Blythe says it's a lead detectives are now exploring. The driver of the suspect vehicle has still never been identified. For now, a date for the trial for Perez is scheduled for November 5th. In studio, I'm Olivia LaVoice, 17 News.